Hello, you're welcome to Online Healing Crusade. We are so glad to have you tonight again in the name of Jesus. You know, this Online Healing Crusade takes place every day, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. So if you are joining us for the first time, it's everyday affair, everyday crusade, everyday the power of God reaching you. Hallelujah. And I just want you to believe God is sending a servant unto you because he's called of God, anointed of God, and commissioned by God to carry out, to go preach and carry out this online healing crusade. Hallelujah. God is about to visit you tonight. Without wasting time, join me to welcome the servants of the Lord. Evangelist Louis Ulufemi Gunari actually brings the word of the Lord with the power of God right from the throne of grace unto us in the name of Jesus. Stay tuned and God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank God for another opportunity to bring you the word of life. I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will speak to somebody today and minister the word of life to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll be reading from um, Luke. Chapter 15. I start from verse 3. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he had found it, he let it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me. For I found my sheep, which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she has found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you that is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. Praise God. Now, um, as God put in my heart today, I want to talk to you about any Christian or anybody that has been in Christ and for one reason or the other, went back, backslid, or withdrew, or like somebody said, uh, he said, um, whosoever, uh, there was a person that uh, after he's been born again, uh, he himself said that uh, there was a time that uh, those who follow him up came up and said, oh, for a long time we have not seen you in fellowship or in church, what happened to you? Uh, well, you gave your life to Jesus that time, so what happened? He said, well, I gave my life then, but I have taken it back. Ah, what do you mean? That started another level of uh, explanation. But that word is what I want to bring up now. How can somebody say, I gave my life before, but I have taken it back from Jesus? Can you do that? So whatever it is, whatever state you find yourself, that is not the right way that God wants your life to be. You are the person I'm talking to today by the Spirit of God. Have you been in Christ before, or you walk away from Christ? Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's this uh, 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 occasion. I remember a story now. Uh, when we went to university many years ago, I was already preparing to be a servant of God when I leave the university. So even while I was a student, I was already practicing the things of the gospel and the things that relate to the word of God and the ministry, as it were. It's like I was training to become a minister even though I was a student. I didn't go to any Bible school afterwards. Immediately I left the university, I just started ministry straight away. So most of the time, I have learned a lot of things while in the leadership of a Christian body uh, as students in, in the university. So um, this occasion, I wouldn't forget. There was this particular person that um, they said is in medical school, and uh, he used to be a Christian. And um, I don't know what happened. They said uh, he joined another kind of club, or but he maybe didn't know it's a different <coughs> thing. He thought it was a scientific thing because he's in medicine and he's interested in 
most of these uh, scientists that we read about, <laughs> about Easton, uh, this one, Galileo, whatever, whatever the, the different things that people used to have uh, their name as great scientists of the past. So this particular either club or demonic group that he went to, they said all those people that you see that are great scientists, they have passed through this thing we are talking about. So if you want to be great, come and join us. We'll teach you the way of egg or grail or whatever. They just put a lot of things together. And then this young man went among them. Are you getting what I'm saying? And um, instead of becoming a great scientist, his head, you know, turned not. Um, so people now brought him to me on campus because we, while we were on campus, a lot of people knew that we were we knowledgeable when it comes to the things of God. You understand what I'm saying? So if other people have cases that they can't handle, they bring them to us, maybe because of grace anyway. So that they said this person needs deliverance. There used to be a member of their fellowship, but as he was going in the, as he was going in the, he was going in, uh, what do you call it, he was going in, in PG Hall, and between that PG Hall and another place, he he was, um, uh, he just, uh, there's, there's no bush or anything major there, but what was there was uh, uh, just a small place where a little shrub, but this person said he saw a lion coming out, and as the lion was coming out, he, he was running away from the lion. Where is, this is campus, there is no lion inside the place, you understand what I'm saying? But it was still strange things and hearing strange voices, you know, and that's the beginning of madness, you know. So they grabbed him and they brought him to my, as I was, I was about to get out of my room in PG Hall then, and they now said, uh, uh, please, sir, this young man needs deliverance. Uh, what happened? They said this and this. So whosoever came, I said, the person should go, let me handle this matter. So we went back, we sat down. I didn't go to sports center where we used to do deliverance for people. I just sat back and I said the person should sit down. Let me know what is the case so we know how to handle it. By the time the night explained everything to me, he used to be a Christian in their fellowship, he was no more coming, he now joined this group that they call themselves scientists and eventually it's now something demonic that they are involved in. And uh, he, he's now his head has gone, you know, he's now seeing different things and hearing strange things, like as we are coming. I said he saw lion, that lion is chasing him and things like that. Okay. So I said, the young man should listen to me. And I started ministering to him. But I didn't minister to him as if deliverance case. I was ministering to him as a backsliding brother. You don't get my point. Since I heard that he's been born again before, but he left and then went to some other group of people and now got into all this trouble. So I didn't minister to him as if he needs deliverance. Let's go to the sports center. Let's go and bind devil. I was not binding devil. I'm just talking to him, one on one. But I was talking under unction and under anointing. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I told him, I said, listen to me, young man. You were in Christ before. If you are in Christ and you remain in Christ, this demon that is harassing you now can never touch you. Because if you remain inside Jesus Christ, there's no devil that can harass you. But you left the fold of Christianity. You moved to this other group for a number of years. And see what has become of you. You are not a scientist now. You are not. Now they said that if you don't get better now, you can't continue in medical school. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it means you're going to drop off. But that's not the plan of God for you. That's the devil trying to turn everything around. Are you getting it? But I see what you need right now is I think you need Jesus. If you walk back to Jesus, his arms are wide open, ready to receive you. But you have to go back as if you are getting born again, again. You have to tell him you are sorry. You have to tell him I was part of your fold. I walk away from you. I thought there's something better outside, but I'm coming back into the fold. I know you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I know you are the only one who can help my life and all that. Just talk to him. He can hear you. He's here. Wherever two or three of us are gathered, he's there. So he can listen to you. So, and um, by the time we, I finished the message, I was preaching to him as if I was preaching to a big crowd. After, the next thing I see was that he bowed down his head, was ready for prayer. So I led him to Christ, back to Jesus, talk to God by himself, ask for forgiveness, everything that is coming back to Jesus and all that. Because he has listened to the message afresh. And that's how he was restored. At the end of that, I said, okay, uh, you guys, you said we should go and do deliverance for him. I think we are ready for the deliverance now. He just looked at me and said, I don't think I need it. I said, that's what I expect of you. 
Because when you are in Christ, you don't need deliverance. <laughs> and you get what I'm saying? But why do I bring that story now? This place says that if you have 100 sheep and one get lost, what does that mean? The 100 has been part of your sheep before one of them went away. You get it now. One got lost, so he's been part of the fold. That means it's not that he didn't know Jesus. It's not that he didn't have a shepherd. He has a shepherd over his soul, but he walked away from the shepherd of his soul. Are you getting And if you look, look move away from your shepherd, there's always the wolf there. There's always the uh, bear. There's always, you know, different kind of animals that are ready to destroy any sheep that is not having a shepherd around him. Are you getting what I'm saying? So all you need is to come back to your come back to your maker. Go back to the Savior. Are you getting what I'm saying? Get under the blood again. Get back to the cross where you first met the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, the Bible says we should leave the 99 and go look for that one person that has been in the fold but left the fold and we are not looking for him. We can't find him. We must find him. We must locate him. We must bring him back. And the Bible now says, once we are able to bring him back with joy, we bring that sheep on our shoulder, and then we come back. Every other person will rejoice with us, my friend. Come and rejoice because I found one of my lost sheep. Now, back to you. Who is hearing me today that you have walked away from Jesus? Who is hearing me today that you used to be a fine boy in church? We are no more in church. I remember again many years, I don't know why these stories are coming. I mean, God is talking to somebody very seriously today. I remember another story now. Uh, many years ago, uh, I, I think I finished from the university, and then, um, but there was this young man that uh, he was part of the people that we were all sinners together, and young boy following all of us, and we were teaching them the way of the devil, the way to, to, to be a, a, a more wicked sinner. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh, in that process, I got to university, I got born again, I got restored back to God, and I was doing fine in the things of God. But this other one has just been admitted to a, a university in my town. So when I came to town, I had that university, okay, I went around, around the hostel where they were staying, so I, I preached to him, I ministered to him, he was just laughing me to scorn. <laughs> my brother, I know. I know you like Jesus, but as for me, me, I've left Jesus. Oh, I know I have any time for Jesus now. Hey, what's going on? He said, now, if you have come maybe last year or two years ago, you, uh, my case may, be, may still be redeemable. But right now, I'm too bad. I'm now the leader of Taiwan Broker Club. And uh, not only that, I'm the one who lead them in different songs. I change the songs that we sing in church. I sing them to, you know, I'm one drunk cast club kind of songs. So everybody like me. I make the place happy. Ah, and all that. <coughs> so he said, that's why I said, that's no, my case is too bad now. God can't even be doing me. God can't take me. I said, don't worry. So, but as he was talking, some of his friends were laughing. So I knew what to do. My spirit just felt that I have to take him away from that crowd before I can get him to be serious and be sober. So I said, do you do social calls? He said, yeah, do you do social calls? Yes, we do social calls. Oh, fine, I have the books for all those courses, you know. Let's get back to my place, okay? And then I'll give you those books. They are going to help you. Because I was <laughs> it's much more, many years senior to him. So, um, high school in Ife, these schools in Adoikiti, part of our country, Nigeria. So I said, I'm going to give him those books. So he followed me to come and take books. I knew that. It's not only books. When I got to, I placed all the books down. Say, now let's talk what I was talking to you before. I said, I'm telling you that uh, <laughs> if you get back to Jesus, you are telling me that you are a bad boy now. You are too bad for God. Are you as bad as I was before I got born again? What are you talking about? There is nothing you have done that we have not done worse off. And if Jesus can take us, he can take you. I, I can't imagine myself being in heaven and begin to look at you at the other side, you being in hell. And I'm the one that introduced you to smoking, to drinking. Now he will see you in hell. I can't allow that. The devil, I won't allow the devil to take you away. I told you that way was right. That's why you follow me to that road. Now I'm coming back to tell you that way is a bad way. That's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that road is destruction. I'm telling you a better thing. You are telling me you are. By the time I finish talking with him, say, ah, I don't think it's as serious as that. It's more serious. How can I leave you on the road to hell? What kind of friendship is that? When I have known a better way. He was ready to accept Jesus. I led him to Christ. He was weeping. I was weeping. The two of us were weeping together. You must get back to Jesus. Jesus loves you. 
How can he die for you and you still remain in this kind of storm? He was totally restored. He was in his final year at that time. He graduated. He went to serve. When he was serving, he served with coppers. Uh, you know, Christian coppers. Not only that, he mixed with another bigger ministry called Deeper Life. It became established in God and all that. Because somebody dared to bring a lost sheep back home. That's my point. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't let us shoot wounded soldiers. Since they are wounded, that should not be the end of the journey. If your friend had an issue, and it's no more doing well in God. The Bible says, leave the 99 that are doing well. Go look for the one that is not doing well. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the message of today is not for Christians that are doing well so they can do better. It's for the one that have dropped off from the line. That only one that dropped off. God still loves you. Jesus died on the cross for you. If you are the only one that has gone away from God, Jesus, for the sake of you, will have come to the world to come and redeem you alone. Shedding his blood for your sake. You get what I'm saying? The Bible says, What shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? I don't know what the devil is trying to give you as a bargain for your soul. Are you getting what I'm saying? The devil may offer you money, the devil may offer you materials, the devil may offer you uh, drinks, smoke, water. What nonsense are all those things compared to eternity in heaven? If a man dies in a moment, he will forget all the money he has ever had. In fact, he doesn't need to die, he just needs some serious sickness. By the time a man is terribly sick, he will forget about every other money he has ever spent. Any joy or any enjoyment he has ever had, he will forget it in a hurry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I want you to understand that God wants you back. I don't know why a lot of stories are coming up. Now, there's another story I read from Kenneth Hagin. He has gone to be with the Lord now, a great man of God. And he was talking about what you preach is what people will believe. What they believe is what they will behave, and that's how their life will be. So if you preach sin, your people will be sin. If you preach righteousness, they will be righteous. If you preach backsliding, they will backslide. <laughs> and you get what I'm saying? So he now gave an example of uh, a particular person who used to be a minister of the gospel. Listen to me very well. A minister of the gospel that after being a minister of the gospel, then I think he was trying to preach to some... Um, trying to preach to people in the beer parlor, you know, trying to convert them. And one of them just slapped him and then hit him or did something back. He, out of anger, he too slapped back. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it became a fight. And people were now mocking him. Ah, pastor fighting. <laughs> pastor fighting the beer parlor and all that. And the doctrine that he has had in church before that time is that um, once you do anything wrong and you go back God will never take you again. That's the end of your life. You are just finished. You are on your way to hell straight. There is no redemption back for you again. So he has had those kind of messages before that thing happened to him. So when this one now happened to him, he just got back home, packed his load. The wife said, what's happening? Ah, I've done bad. I've backslidden. So I'm on my way to hell now. So I don't want to disturb you. Wife and children, you can take care of yourself. I'm going to look for a way to get away from here and all that. And he left ministry, left family, and walked away. He went, moved away from that town, moved to another town where he can be doing a job that people would never know that uh, he's, he's formerly a pastor. And then he now continued drinking because he used to drink before he got born again. So that's the kind of life he was living when he now had the message of Kennedy again. And that was talking about redemption, restoration, that God, if you get back to him, he will take you again. He said, are you sure he can take me? The Bible says that if a man sin like this, that's the, there is no other hope. He should just be waiting for eternal destruction. God will never take him. Say, who told you that? So by the time Baba again ministered to him, he got him restored. He picked his Bible, went back home, went back to the family, and then the anointing came back on him again like an evangelist. And he started back, he went back to the field to go and do more adam damage to the kingdom of the devil. Because somebody told him that, that you have seen once, does not mean that's the end of your life. After all, you have not died. Need down and talk to God about what you have done. I say, if you forgive you, you forgive you. You had more sin before you got born, born again. How can this one sin now come and take you to hell? They were more sin on your neck when he died for you on the cross. The Bible says, why you are yet sinner? Christ died for the ungodly. If you can die for the ungodly, why would you not die for the godly that became, that, that basically dead? Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you have 100 sheep and one of them get lost, you will leave the 99 and look for one. 
I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I'm talking to a lost soul who feels there's no way back. There is way back. If only you can get back to God today, He will receive you. He will forget everything you have done. He will clean your, your slate clean. He will clean your account as if you didn't do anything wrong. Just confess before God and then Lord say, I'm coming back home. You are the Lord of my life. I can't get away. I'm going to get into the hand of the devil. Only the devil will just laugh at me and see me in hell. But you don't want me there. That's why you died for me on the cross of Calvary. God loves you to come home. He gave us the story of a lost son. I didn't get to that here. Uh, if you start from that, uh, Luke chapter 15, you start from verse 12 and keep reading on till the end of the passage, you are going to get uh, the story of the lost son that we usually call prodigal son. He's the elder son and the younger son. You remember that one said, give me the property that belongs to me, inheritance, and he squandered it. You might have squandered your life. You might have squandered your destiny. You might have squandered your purpose in life. But that's not the end. That's not, as long as you are not there. Mm-hmm. You can still get back to God. You can talk to that God today and say, Father, I'm not even worthy to be this or that, but I just want to get back home. I'm coming back home. That prodigal son said that, he said, concerning my father, he lost me. The way these people are treating me here, my dad can't treat a servant who is working in his uh, backyard. He can't treat him like that. Mm. I'm getting back home. And he made up his mind. The Bible said, when he came to his senses, may this message today make you to come to your senses. The devil wants to steal your soul. The devil wants to mortgage your soul. The devil is the first bureau to, to change that exchange destiny of people for money. He has changed destiny of people for little pleasure. He has changed destiny of people for little things of this world. And they think that they are enjoying Not knowing that their soul is going. Are you getting what I'm saying? I've seen young men less than 40 that died. 30 something dying. Why? They were looking for money in a hurry. And they got some money. And they went around spending it in the process of spending, they spend their life. Waste their life off. How I wish somebody would have told them, don't go that road. But it doesn't matter the road you have gone. If today you are ready to come back to the master, he will take you again. He will clean your life. He will give you a new beginning. He has done it before. He can do it again. Rahab the Harlot was as, black, as bad as that. A prostitute, professional prostitute that is known by people in the country and people from outside the country. Are you getting what I'm saying? But when she got an opportunity to come to the master, she changed everything. She said, save my soul. You people that came to our country, please save my soul. Save my dad. Save my mom. We are plenty here in sin. Save us. And they show him the way to be saved. And God wants to save somebody too. I believe whatever the devil has been trying to give you a picture of no return, no return, no return. If you return, God will not take you. That's a lie. If God says, I believe that you to go and do for one, he will take you. You get what I'm saying. Your soul is more important to God than anything else. That's why He sent Jesus to die for you on the cross of Calvary. If you want to, if you want you to be punished for your sin, the sins you have committed before you got born again is enough to take you to hell. But He sent His Son to be a reputation for your sin, so that instead of you being judged and being condemned to hell, Jesus, who did not sin at all, went to hell for your behalf, so that you don't have to go there. It's only the devil that the place is meant for. It's not meant for human men. Are you get what I'm saying? But the devil is looking for how to take as many people as possible to the place. It's not your place. That's not your final abode. You shouldn't be on the road to that place. I don't know. I want to pray with you. Whatever the devil has done is not the last. There's still something God can do to return you back home. But God needs your cooperation. Will you give him your heart? Will you allow him to your heart? Say, I'm knocking at the door of a man's heart. Whosoever can open the door to me, I will come in. I will suffer with it myself, my father, who will dwell with him. Are you getting that he is going to be our son? We are going to be father for him. We're going to be son. That's if he opens the door of his heart. Say, I knock. You know, Jesus doesn't force his will on anybody. I knock at the door. Whosoever give me, I will go in. Are you ready to accept him today? Will you welcome him into your life? Will you tell him what you have done wrong that made you to leave Christ and go away and get back to your creator, get back to your savior today? He will take you. Whatever you might have done, he will receive you. And you can be a powerful minister of God in the future. You can be so useful to God in this generation and in the generations to come. If only you can take what I'm saying to you to, to be serious. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone and anyone that is hearing me, hearing the sound of my voice at this moment, and they have gone away from God, the Creator, from Jesus, their Savior. But they are coming back to the Lord of their life today. 
whatever they might have done, that the devil is telling them, ah, you've gone too far, the devil, you have gone so far, God can't take you, that's a lie. God is the one that says, I will leave 99 and I will go after the one. God is getting after you today. Will you make a U-turn back to him? Will repentance mean you turn away from the way you are going, you turn back to where you are coming from? Turn back to the script to your creator. Turn back to your savior. His, eye, his hands are wide open to receive you. And I want you to begin to talk to God now. Before I even pray for you, I want you to begin to talk to God. Talk to him. Tell him what, where you miss it. Tell him what happened. Tell him how you, 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 you drop down from the line. Tell him you want to come back to him. You know he loves you. You know he's your master. You know he's your savior. Nobody can love you like him. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, whoever you know, believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. He doesn't want you to perish. He wants you to have eternal life. Now you had that before, you messed it and then missed it and then move away. You move back in. Get back on board. And God is going to welcome. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for those who have listened and are talking to God right now. You can follow me in the following prayers. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I know you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I know you shed your blood. Take away my sins. I've been with you. I walk away. I've been deceived by the deceiver. I've been tempted by the tempter. And I've wasted a lot of my years out there. But I want to come back to you. And I know you will take me. Your word say, anyone that comes to the master, you will not cast them out. You will take them in. I believe you will take me in. And then you wash me clean and give me a new beginning. I want to start all over again. Give me the strength to be able to say no whenever the devil comes again. And give me the courage to be able to stand with you till the end. The Bible say, he that endure to the end shall be saved. Give me that grace to be able to endure, not for just a time, not just for a few years, unto the end, finally, finally, so that I can reign with you, I can rule and reign with you forever, and I will never for any reason get back to them. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Everyone that prayed that prayer, I come under the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ now. I say, Lord, your word say, whosoever's reign is remitted here or not, shall be remitted in heaven. Whatever sin they have come, they have confessed before you now, and they have confessed you as their Lord and Savior. Accept them according to your word. Write their name in the book of life. Erase their name from the book of sinners and give them a new beginning. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Restore them to their purpose in life. Restore them to their destiny. Give them their life assignment. Let their life become better. In Jesus' name, I pray. Every demon that used to make you return like pendulum, return back to where you're coming from, return back to where you're coming from, I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. And I grant you a new life that will give you progress and advancement forward ever, never backward, in the name of Jesus. Upward ever, no downward, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Until tomorrow, be healthy, wealthy, and strong. God bless you.